Dr. Lavin here today. So I'm very, very lucky today because we are starting our set of special patients. And these are patients that are actually going to talk about certain conditions they have or procedures they've gone through. Because I find with these expert patients, they can actually provide a really personal account of what's actually happened to them and really, really good teaching for us as doctors, but also for our patients. So I have lovely Julian here who's kindly offered to talk about a recent knee operation he's had. Now knee operations, traditionally, because of some of the activities we do in our daily lives, they can deteriorate over time and actually on the offer of having an operation, people actually have a big discussion with us as GPs on whether they should go ahead with it or whether, whether they shouldn't. It's a difficult one for us because we always discuss this in terms of quality of life, so how much of an impact it has. But the great thing with Julian today, after a brief chat we've had already, is actually finding out some hacks in terms of having knee operations, but also tricks and myths that we can talk about so that we can make sure that the patients that are watching today here may learn something useful. So if you do go ahead and have a knee operation, you may find some benefit from these videos. So thank you so much, Julian, for uh, joining us today. Yeah, um, I was going to say, firstly, the, the elbow that I did for you the other day in terms of a steroid injection, uh, and that was for tennis elbow, actually, from one of the videos we did. How's that going at the moment? It's golfers. A golfer's <laughs> fight, so I'll find <laughs> it for me. Good. Okay. How's that going? It's going fantastic. Um, I spent a lot of time on YouTube um, looking at um, different exercises, and there are about sort of three or four, but the basis of it is, is sort of stretching, and rolling and getting blood to the area. Um, I did a lot of that. Uh, eventually, um, it got to a point where it, it just, the last bit just wouldn't go. Okay. Um, so I asked Lavin if he wouldn't mind um, sticking a needle in there, <laughs> which he did. And uh, I still did the exercises for several months afterwards. And so far, I've had uh, no recurrence. And I've been doing, the most, the m most important thing is uh, in the gym, uh, when you're gripping, uh, you don't sort of grip with the ends of your fingers, you grip with your whole hand and therefore all of your muscles are activated. That's the problem in the beginning. If you grip with just the ends of your fingers then just a couple of muscles are activated and they're not up to the job <laughs> and they get strained. Why don't we start with kind of the history and what made you get to this stage of having a knee operation? Okay, uh, well I had uh, a problem when I was 10 years old um, mm. and I had I would be walking across the road and uh, my knee would just give out. And this was a long time ago, I mean, this is 48 years ago. Wow. Um, so the operation there, which would now be an arthroscopy, which would uh, you'd walk out of there in an hour, <laughs> it, I was in hospital for two weeks with a full length plaster cast, which I had on for six weeks wow. with a straight leg. Uh, I had a three inch scar and they took a big chunk out. Uh, that was when I was 12. Um, I quite like fitness, so over the years I tried to run, and it was I used to have to run through the pain, right. um, and I would invariably, after a year or so, end up in hospital having another chunk taken out. Um, wow. So it got to a point where I went to New York with my family, and there's a lot of walking involved, and I was just in agony all the time. I was limping. Uh, my son said I look like a hobo, <laughs> and um, yeah, and I just thought when I get back, I've got to get this sorted out because it's ridiculous. I could walk. I mean, we go for, we'll walk with my wife for 20 minutes in the evening, and it's okay. So you know, going downhill a bit, but it's uh, it was doable. But um, yeah, it was kind of coming to that point. So I approached the doctor, a uh, surgeon, and um, he did an arthroscopy. Mm. back in January okay. and he said actually you're bone on bone and with a tiny bit of cartilage which is falling apart so uh, it's time to do it right. so um, I mean I did ask uh, I did ask the surgeon do I really need this operation you know, it's a big scary operation despite there being hundreds of thousands of them done every year so I was concerned that I was jumping into something which has risks um, uh, not to be underestimated um, and yet I could walk for sort of 20 minutes uh, and I had heard uh, on the YouTube grapevine that you know you have to be the walking dead before <laughs> it's time for a knee op so um, and he said yes you really need it you know I'm 58 next 20 years are really important health wise it's a very good time and the way knee ops are going these days if you get a good knee good <laughs> surgeon everything lines up and you do what you're supposed to do as a patient then um, you may not need another replacement for the rest of your life. 
That's really useful, Julian. So, I think one of the points you made quite clearly there is about the length of time for knees because the assumption is, oh, we will only last five, ten years, but the understanding is, if, which we're going to talk about soon, if we prepare it very, very well before pre-op, then actually, hopefully, and looking after it, obviously, afterwards, we can probably keep that knee going for a lot longer. Yeah, that's Good. absolutely Good. key. Perfect. So, should we move on to the actual procedure itself yeah. that you okay. had and, and appear today? So, um, it was amazing, really, <laughs> uh, compared to what I've just told you about my first operation when I was in tw when I was twelve. <laughs> this operation, I had uh, went in on the Monday, uh, three o'clock. I walked into the sort of out theatre, if you like, lots of people milling around, looking at X-rays of previous people, <laughs> knees, um, and they were all lovely, as <laughs> they all medical staff always are. And um, I had an epidural. Um, that's what they do nowadays, rather than full general, they give you an epidural because it's uh, less risky, uh, less invasive. Um, I don't know the reasons why, but I can imagine it, if you're putting your whole body out, you know, it can, it can maybe damage things. So the epidural numbs you from the waist down and a, a light general. And uh, I was out like a light, I didn't feel it. Um, I elected not to have a catheter um, and the lady said, well, as long as you go to the toilet just before you walk down, that's okay. So, um, next thing I know, I'm awake and uh, starving, had a nice meal, uh, then I had another one. <laughs> um, and uh, by six o'clock, so three or four hours later maybe, I was actually asked to stand up out of bed. Wow. So, and I just shocked really. All I had was um, a light plaster over my whole knee. Great. And um, so I stood on it and um, she said, full weight, so I put full weight on, and it wasn't that bad. Yeah, it hurt a bit, but you know, what do you expect? <laughs> um, so that was, that was a miracle, really, um, in many ways. Um, the next day, I was um, walking down the corridor, just a very short walk, uh, with two sticks, um, these sticks here. <laughs> uh, not crutches, <laughs> because they like you to be fully weight-bearing, to build up the bone strength. The next day, which was two days post-op, I was still in hospital, um, I reacted very badly to the meds. Mm. Um, they're opioids, morphine, tramadol, yeah. and um, I was very violently sick. <laughs> and uh, so, and I, I'd had a previous operation where it had been a bit like that. So I asked, to, well they suggested I come off them, and go on to, believe it or not, just ibuprofen, 500 milligrams, yeah. and uh, thousand milligrams of paracetamol okay. and it was fine you know mm. the, the pain was okay yeah it hurts again but you know not that bad we're Good. talking threes and fours it does ramp up and down a bit depending on when you've had the meds yeah, yeah. but anyway it stopped the sickness it took me a couple of days to get out of my system three days post-op I mm. left hospital mm. and walked out of there with uh, two oh, sticks brilliant. The next day I was uh, down to one stick because I didn't really feel I needed two sticks um, and because you know, you've got to carry things around, despite having people around in the house, which you do need somebody around if you need them, mostly you can manage yourself and uh, I was down to one stick and trying to walk normally, which is not an easy task because it's very swollen and very stiff. The other thing is that um, I've, a couple of days ago I was allowed to take the outside plaster off great. and I've been allowed to have showers as well, okay. which is great. Good. The the plaster they give you is big and it really does seal the whole of the area. Okay. And um, the most important thing, keep an eye on it because you don't want it to split because it can, if you're bending your knee, it can split and you don't want to get anything in there because number one is you do not want an infection and that means be very careful with any blades or any cutting that you do. No cuts <laughs> and you should be okay. Good. Thank you so much, Julian. So I guess this nicely moves on to some of the tricks or some of the real advice I think people miss out on pre-procedure and, and maybe some of these hacks that we, we can go on to. In terms of pre-procedure, there's, I guess, a, a few tips that we can actually tell some of our followers on what they could do, maybe advice on you know, finding consultants, but even this care or the, the way we treat our bodies before the procedure, how and, uh, and, and how they can make an impact on the actual procedure and the aftercare. Really important, find a surgeon who does lots of knees and hips. Good. Um, another thing is 
try and find out what prosthetic they will be using because I found out that unfortunately you know you know you are at the center of this but businesses are there to make money every business is True. and um, so there's when you produce a new product you do certain tests but there are R&D and we're talking about things that may last 20 20 years so you don't find out that it might be something bad for a long time afterwards True. and um, I won't mention any names but there was a big company that wanted to get in on the act they made some changes to avoid copyrights those changes were not good and people had some problems so make absolutely sure what it is they're sticking inside you yeah. uh, make sure it's from a reputable company and there, you want to know that there are thousands that have been around and in this country there's a national register that you can find out information from and your surgeon should be open and, uh, and tell you what the statistics are Great, you know, that's fantastic advice. I think a lot of us even as doctors forget to ask these questions. So thank you yeah. for that, Julie. So that's that. Um, now the other big thing which um, I kind of learned about probably a bit, a bit too late, but not too late, was prehab. Um, everybody talks about rehab. Prehab is, I think, probably more important. Um, I hadn't been able to straighten my leg for several years. Um, and uh, I thought it was because the bone had grown into a shape that had protected itself, bigger surface area, and it, it wouldn't go. Now I find out it was actually just scar tissue. You know, as soon as you have any, um, any problem with a joint, scar tissue is being made to protect your body to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but it makes it inflexible. So flexion is massively, massively important. And afterwards, it's your biggest challenge is to be able to straighten your leg and to be able to bend your leg. Bending kind of can come with time, but straightening is harder and it hurts to do that. So I would say that, give my time again, I would spend a lot more time on flexion, pushing your knee down to get it straight. Um, the other thing as well, which I did do, fortunately, uh, I knew the op was coming, so I started going down the gym and um, I spent a lot of time on quad exercises, some hamstrings, calf muscles and building up those muscles and that was partially why I didn't feel as much pain as maybe some other people because my muscles were very strong and it was protecting which is what it's all about. So once you've had a knee up you want it protected because I think they take the cruciate ligament out mm -hmm. you haven't got a cruciate so you need muscles to pull it together so hugely important you've got to look at this you can't look at this as just sticking a knee in and getting on with your life. It's um, you need to change your life and look at it like some sort of, you know, athletic yeah. kind of attitude towards it or bodybuilder type of thing. And and a term we use and you use today actually with this kind of uh, no pain no gain. I think that's yeah. quite key in this because yeah. um, the idea of feeling pain and, and maybe stopping and saying oh that's the end of that. Actually, you were telling us earlier, actually, it's actually a good thing to try and push on. And yes, and uh, like a bodybuilder, and I follow bodybuild, some bodybuilders kind of quite interested in it from my early years. You know, no pain without gain is, is the mantra. <laughs> and uh, that is because they don't get massive by <laughs> not avoiding pain. You know, they, they, they tear the little tendons and, and they rebuild and make themselves stronger. So, you know, and then I was told by the physio that with the knee, specifically with the knee, it's about pain and if it hurts, exercise well and you're doing it properly, then that is a good thing, it's not something to avoid. You just have to grit your teeth and go through it and it will make it a lot better uh, in, the, in the end result. Good. And a, a hack, I guess, in terms of um, strengthening these quadriceps, commonly our patients say, oh, I can't lift the weight, I can't strengthen that quadriceps, it's very yeah. difficult, so I don't bother. Yeah. We've just discussed here that actually quadriceps strengthening is, is very key for the success of this procedure. So mm. I understand you know a, a hack for us that yes. may improve things. Yeah, I mean, my attitude was, um, well, I, I can't do quads, I can't do squats, I can't do uh, leg extensions because I've got a bad knee. Yeah. So originally I was uh, of the mindset that I wouldn't be able to do any quad exercises and my physio simply said yes there's a lot you can do and this was one so if you imagine being in a gym and having uh, a leg extension machine before I couldn't do anything because it was so painful 
So what he suggested is that you put a lighter weight on, you use this good leg to lift the weight up, you use your bad leg to sit under the weight, and then you take the good leg away, leaving the bad leg with a dead weight, and you literally hold it for as long as you can. I used to hold it for about 60 seconds, I used to time it, and when it got too much, put the other leg up, take the weight, and then I can slowly take the weight off. And you can do that, that angle, that angle, that angle, as many angles as you like. And that was a fantastic uh, exercise where I was actually able to build up some quite good uh, quad muscles, or, uh, despite the fact that I wasn't actually uh, using my knee, rotating my knee, it was very static. So I guess it'd be a really nice time now to talk about a couple of hacks post-operatively yes. uh, that will be nice to maybe talk about because getting access to some of this knowledge is very, very difficult and in the nicest way you're living through it now so you can tell us how it's been benefit. So what about one of the first hacks you, you kind of decided? Yeah, well I learned this on, uh, on another operation. Um, very, 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 very importantly, you must not get a DVT, deep vein thrombosis. You must wear the stockings that they tell you to wear <laughs> despite them being very ugly and uncomfortable. <laughs> but um, you will find that uh, they will itch like crazy. Um, simply, all I did was shave my legs <laughs> and all the itching went away and I've had them on for you know, the eight days, I think, something like that now. So that's the most important thing. But with that, I would say, um, don't shave them before the operation because you do not want cuts and ergo the infection. Um, shave them afterwards and use a uh, beard trimmer so you're just shaving them down to half a millimetre so you're not actually scoring the skin Good. at all but I promise you, you shave your legs down there I know it's a bit weird if you're a <laughs> hairy man but it's worth every ounce of effort so that was good. a big hack for me yeah good good it drives you crazy and then it's really important because a lot of the time our, our patients do come and say, look, can I take it off in the daytime? I'll just wear it at night. And, and the key is if we can keep it on as long as possible throughout that time, that risk that Julian was talking about, a really, really key one, because sadly it can lead to life-threatening complications is, is very important. So thank you for that hack, um, Julian. Um, and the other one is, is about swelling and trying to reduce swelling down. And I know typically the doctors will say, I'll just put a bit of ice on that. But what have you learned from people that can help? Well, you kind of know when it's time to put the ice on because it just feels stretched and, and sore and the heat that comes off your knee is yeah. amazing. Um, I use uh, a cryo cuff yeah. that was, um, I, uh, they're about sort of 60 pounds in the UK, but okay. I was fortunate enough to have a friend who, um, uh, who lent me this. Um, right. It's just a bucket. Yeah. You open it up. You put in some ice and some cold water if you have, <laughs> and you hold it above the uh, the actual knee pack that you put yeah. around around your knee. Just secure that. Just put your leg up and relax. Wow. And then what happens? This gets warm. Yeah. You do that. Right. It drains back in here. You give it a shake. Oh wow. You do that. Wonderful. And you do that three or four times, but after that the water will have gone warm. But sure. by that time your leg will be really cold and it feels kind of nice. And uh, it's been great for, um, uh, for, for keeping the swelling down. But now, um, so I'm eight days out I think, and uh, it's, I'm not really using it that much actually, so, which is amazing. Great, great. Oh, thank you so much. Keep you. on top of swelling, definitely. Good, so, so that's a great hack that even I have to be honest, I, I, I wouldn't advise, I would have normally just have put ice on, but I think it's good to keep it focused and I think the main point of all of this is if we can do everything maximally, pre-operatively and actually even the first week or two after, the, the success of this joint will be wonderful for later and, and you look like you're doing brilliant with it. So Julian, I guess um, we've talked about prehab, which is wonderful because we don't talk about it enough. We've, talking about, we've spoken about the procedure and I guess the, the key bit is now, we've spoken about some of the hacks, but the aftercare and, and maybe some of the exercises, which kindly Julian is going to demonstrate for us in his, in his wonderful socks at the end. Um, but I guess really about the, the health and, and taking it really seriously, if we can do everything we can after the procedure, and, and that may involve things like um, activities you do or behaviours that we do after um, and in, in terms of hobbies, if we can kind of cut those down and make sure we can improve the quality, it may provide 
good success for our knee. So what kind of things could we do to... to well, um, just, in, just to get the context, uh, I think it's important to just backtrack a little bit in as much as when I was looking into this, I have had surgeons and people and YouTube and all over the place saying that you, these will last 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. So there's got to be a reason why there's such a big differential. And for, in my opinion, and what I've been told and what I've come across, it's very much down to um, your sort of demographic and your mental approach. It has to be that. Yeah. Um, I've seen young guys have these operations who have been bodybuilders, who are back to building up huge great quads and doing squats, and older, very unfit looking people who smoke and don't eat properly, having pain for years afterwards and complaining about it, not being able to. And you know, it really, it really has to do with how you approach it. And you have to approach it like, like an athlete. I know we're not athletes; none <laughs> of us are. But um, you have to have that kind of logical mindset where you say, "I'm going to do this four times a day," and you do it four times a day. You push it, you, but you also rest it and give it some good rest. And uh, that's probably the most important thing. So, you know, it's obvious, really, but you've got to stop smoking or cut down on smoking if you smoke. The Good. first thing they ask you in, in uh, surgeries are, do you smoke because of the vitamin C? I and mean, you know yeah. about that more than I do. Yeah. Um, what you put into your body, any athlete or bodybuilder will tell you that it makes every ounce of difference. Um, so it's not easy for people you know, like me and all that, but you've, you've got to do the best you can. Just try and eat some whole food. Good. Um, so there's that. The exercise regime is paramount. You've got to stick to that. Um, what else is uh, um, plenty of rest if you can get it, and it isn't always easy at the beginning, but you must get plenty of rest as well. So to work hard and play hard. Good. You've got to approach it as a challenge, a long-term challenge, uh, not an inconvenience or not something to be just done and forgotten about because uh, you will pay the penalty. It's got to be a challenge and you've got to work at it and um, then I can hopefully see that within a couple of months things will be back to normal. And the other thing as well is um, your mindset before um, uh, expectations. Yeah. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that uh, it's not as good as it was before. I don't believe that. Mm. If you're in agony and you need a, re a knee replacement, then most people, 99% of people, aren't going to be in that agony afterwards. True. So what their expectations must be that, oh, it's going to be a brand new knee like yeah. I was 20. It's not. True. It's plastic, it's metal. Um, so it's very important to have expectations that you need to be, it needs to work and you need to be out of pain, but any more than that is a bonus. Right. That's lovely, Julian. Thank you so much for summarising. So I guess for us, some of the key points we've taken today is preoperatively and also postoperatively, what we always, always talk about as doctors, this lifestyle advice. We've been talking about smoking, weight, all of these will have a huge impact on it. But I guess for me as a learning, it's, it's been wonderful, is, is just the key about these exercises, which Julian is going to kindly run through at the end of this video, but also simple things like these cryo cuffs, these things that provide coolness around the joint that can reduce the inflammation and actually improve recovery but also simple hack like shaving your legs which will stop the itching which therefore will reduce the risk of uh, developing DVTs. So Julian thank you so much for taking the time and pleasure. explaining all of this because I think even as doctors we are learning from some of our expert patients. Um, so if we don't mind we can go through some of the exercises? Yeah sure. Perfect. So the first exercise uh, I do is kind of a blood pump I think. Um, so you do sort of 15 of those, and you can do these all day long, which is really good because it will get the blood flowing, which is obviously is healing, but it will stop DVT, and we don't want to get that. So plenty of those. The next one is to um, activate your quads. So I pull, that up, I pull my toe up, and I straighten my knee, like what I'm trying to do is that. As you can see, it's quite bent at the moment. Uh, this is quite common. So I do 10 of those. And what you're trying to do is there's a gap underneath and you're trying to close the gap. Uh, the next exercise I do on the same sort of, um, same sort of thing is I pull that up, I 
tense the quad muscle and I lift the leg up. Now, that's quite a hard one to do and you could get a bit of a shooting pain, which hurts, but with all these exercises, sometimes the pain gets to, like it can get to a nine, but it goes quickly. So with that one, sometimes it can shoot through the roof. It's much better now, and I'm on day 12. Um, it's much better, um, but it, it is still painful, but it stops quite quickly. So if you can do five of those, then that would be a really good thing to do. The next exercise is to um, get some bend. So I, you can use your hand, because uh, you're not trying to build up a muscle, you're just trying to bend it. And if you're on something smooth, that can help as well. And just do that as well. And you can feel it gets tight, and then when it gets tight and it hurts a bit, I just do it a little bit more. Hold it, and relax it. And you do 10 of those. All these exercises I'm supposed to do four times a day. The next exercise is the most important one and my biggest regret uh, pre-operatively. So prehab, if you can't straighten your leg you need to be a, you need to do this. So you put out your heel under something a bit high so there's quite a bit of space under here. If it's bungee but it doesn't matter. You do the first exercise where the toes come up and you activate the quads and you put a bit of weight. It doesn't matter how much, just a little bit of weight on it and you try and push it down. If um, you were in an operating theatre and they had to manipulate this, which if you don't do this exercise they might have to, you would find that the doctor would easily be able to get this straight. The reason I can't is because it hurts. <laughs> you have to to a certain extent, overcome that, and it may take a month or two to be able to do this. You just do this. The other thing as well is what you can do during the day is just leave your heel up and your, your middle leg and your knee dangling, putting some just, just gravity, and that will be helping as well towards it, and you can do that any type of day. But I, it is very uncomfortable and it is very painful, but once I've stopped, it's gone. So, push on.